Like I said before, family, and I'm not going to say it again, I only debate my equals, all others I teach. And today is time for us to teach our Latinos the truth. The truth is, my brown brothers, is that the Caucasian man has been lying to you. He has been flat out lying to you. And I feel bad because the miseducation of history runs deep. But the time of reckoning is here. The 400 years is up. And now the truth is going to come to the light. And today, you're going to learn some truth. Let's go. Even the Smithsonian sent people to do expeditions. Um, Matthew Sterling had gone in and found what he called Negroid heads. And all anybody has to do is to look at the Olmec heads and see that these are quote unquote Negroid or Africoid in appearance. But let me also say something about how insidious Eurocentric hegemony or so-called white supremacy is. Mexicans, Mexican scholars, Mexican laypersons as well, the average person, knew that these giant Olmec heads were throughout different parts of Mexico, in Tres Zapotes, in La Venta, uh, and other areas. They looked at these heads and said they look like, quote unquote, ne Negros or Africanos to us. What European anthropologists did was claim that these heads were stylized baby jaguar faces, or they were infantile stylizations to try to negate the fact that here's evidence of this pre-Columbian presence of Africans in the Americas. And um, Cyrus Gordon, who was also another uh, scholar of Mesoamerica, right, the pre-Columbian Americas. And Cyrus Gordon, who basically looked at different artifacts and said there's clear evidence that there was exchange between Africans and Native Americans and Asians and Native Americans long before Columbus ever arrived. Like I said, I only debate my equals all others I teach. So to my brown brothers out here, today you're going to get a lesson. Because even the Mexicans admitted to it. The Mexican scholars admitted to the presence of Africans inside of the Americas. All facts. All facts. So if you don't believe my people... I will go get your people and let them explain it to you, okay? Uh, Alexander von Futenau, who was an art historian. In fact, if you can get his book, it's a rare book. It's called Unexpected Faces in Ancient America, right? He just passed away, I say just, it might have been eight or nine years ago. But von Futenau who was talking about all these African and Asian artifacts found throughout Central America and South America, indicating contact between the two continents, or I should say the three continents, if you want to say other parts even of, of Asia outside of Africa. So Africans, Asians, and people in the Americas communicating back and forth. Um, but See what I'm talking about? See, people, this goes to my blacks, Asians, and Hispanics. We were in contact with each other and already communicating with each other before the Europeans even showed up. But after they showed up, somehow we got split apart because you know that's what they do. They divide and conquer. That's just what they do. But before then, Native Indians 
Asians, Africans, they were all in contact with each other, already doing trade, always already already doing trade, already trading artifacts, already trading goods. This was going way before Columbus come. And right after Columbus came, that's when the disconnect happened. But please understand this. Way before Columbus showed up, we were already doing business with each other. Let's go. Today, you're going to get the truth for playing with me. Don't play with me. But the mainstream archaeologists and anthropologists did everything they could to deny and hide it. In fact, von Futenau even says that uh, um, the head of the Smithsonian, a man named uh, Alex Herdlichka, who was a, a European um, trained uh, physical, was a physical uh, anthropologist who focused on the ancient Americas, and who he claims, meaning von Futenau, says that Herdlichka and Cyrus Gordon says the same thing. Herdlichka made sure that any Africoid images of indigenous finds would not be put out on display. So it's like they would warehouse or put those things in the back. They wouldn't let those things be shown out front. And that's why von Futenau's um, uh, work and his book was so powerful and so important and of course um, Ivan van Sertema then became friends with von Futenau and would go to Mexico because that's where von Futenau lived in Mexico City and they would talk and do you know discuss different aspects of the finds and its significance etc. Um, Ivan van Sertema's case was so strong that he was even invited for the 500th anniversary of Columbus's discovery of the Americas to go to Congress and actually give witness, you know, give testimony about how this idea of Columbus's discovery of America is a lie that needs, we need to stop telling it. We need to stop teaching it. Just say what Columbus actually did. Columbus opened up America for permanent European settlements. He didn't discover America. Facts. There you go. Right there. Like I say, if you don't believe my people, I will go get your people and let them tell you the truth. Okay? We were all here predate Columbus. The Asians the blacks, the Latinos, the native Indians. We were all here doing trade in the Americans, okay? Which is not even called America. That is what the Europeans named it. We've been here, always will be here, point blank, period. They distorted history, they lied, they held back um, personal information they held back important information to give everybody a different narrative but I'm sorry to say this my Latino family you've been lied to